This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. And today, we are visiting with another candidate, and that is Tommy Waters. And he is running for city council from District 4 which is huge. Tommy, cut, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on your show. Tell us, who is Tommy Waters? Well, thank you. I will be 53 years old in just a few short weeks. Oh, really? When? Yes. I was born in well, September 27th. Ah. I was born and raised here in Honolulu, actually in Kaneohe, back when Kaneohe was a rural neighborhood. Um, before Windward Mall was built, you know, and Pali Highway was brand new back in 1965. Um, I lived three doors down from a cow pasture, believe it or not. <laughs> it was awesome, the Sousa Dairy. Yeah. You know, and um, when I got accepted to the Kamehameha schools in high school, I moved to town and lived at 4830 Kolohala Street. Where is that? Which is in Kahala. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, one of the very few Hawaiian families in Wailai Kahala at the time, or even now. Um, <laughs> I stayed there all the way through high school. I went to the Komeme schools. I went to the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I had a, or got a degree in political science and speech. And then from there, I went to UH Law School, the Women's Richardson School of Law. And so now you are an attorney, a yes. defense attorney or Prosecuting yes. attorney, what is it? Um, I am a defense attorney. I've been practicing law for 23 years now, ever since I graduated from law school. Um, I enjoy it very much. You know, um, but I tell you this, uh, back in um, college, I took a class from Marion Kelly. Do you remember Marion yes, Kelly? Yes, I do. Um, it was an anthropology class, but she made us go down to the, the Capitol and follow a bill. She said, any bill, just go down and follow it, write testimony, get involved. And that's where I caught the bug, you know. Back then I thought, you know, someday I'm going to be in a place in the legislature where I can make a difference in my home, Hawaii Um And not until 2002 did I decide to run. And I actually served three terms in the Hawaii State Legislature. You, that's where I think where we yes, first Yes, where met. we met, yes. Yeah, years ago. Yeah, yes. So, now you are running for the city council. That's correct. Now that's a much larger district yes. than the legislature. Huge. I think there's almost three senatorial districts and one house district. Um, almost five house districts and one council district, uh, I should yes. say. Yeah. Now I have a question about sure. that. But I keep asking and no one seems to know. Eight, 1908 when the city was created, there were eight what are, they're not, they're what we call now city council people, but there were eight. Now, here we are with a million people and only nine councilmen. There's something, I find that absurd, but no one else seems to see it's like, Ernie Martin's district, have you ever seen that thing on the map? It's huge. It's huge, yeah. I, I even in my district, I've been walking door to door every day since January 10th. And it's almost impossible to, to knock on every door. It really is. Oh. I think we have over 100,000 registered voters in our district. And it runs all the way from Makapu Point on the Makai side all the way to Ala Moana Beach Park. Oh and then on the Malka side, same Makapu point along the ridge to the Sierra Drive, down to Wailai Avenue, cutting down through half of Kamuki, half of Kapuhulu, and all of Waikiki. So it's, it's enormous, actually. Well, yes, it is enormous, but as a city council district, all of those areas 
have different needs, different wants, different issues. Yes. And kind of lumping them all together seems something's wrong. But anyway, so what are the issues, the different issues? Because you have different issues in different That's districts. True. That's true. Um, I'll, I'll just share with you what I've been learning walking door to door. You know, but I will also share with you, initially, you know, in January when I was walking door to door, um, nobody wanted to talk to me, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm knocking on people's doors and introducing myself, and I say, hey, Marsha, I'm, I'm Tommy Waters running for city council. Can we talk about how to make our community a better place? And initially, everybody said, no, it's okay, we're fine. But nobody was really thinking about it. And, and by the way, I, I was trying to make democracy as easy as possible by showing up at somebody's door, right? You don't have to call in, you don't have to email, I'm here, right? Um, as it got closer to the election, people are starting to engage and talk about what's going on. And, and that's what I want to share with you. I think the number one concern has been homelessness. You know, did you know that in our district, Council 4, which I know you live as well, while the numbers island-wide are shrinking, the numbers in our district, homelessness, are growing. And you can see them right across in Kahala, yes. across from um, Wailai, excuse me, Aloha Gas Station. You got people living under the bridge, panhandling across from Kahala Mall, sleeping at the bus stops. Even I met a gentleman up at the top of Wilhelmina Rise saying there's homelessness up at the top of his mountain. In Hawaii Kai, you got homelessness, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's grown in the last four years. And it troubles me that we haven't really. We've been trying, but our, our current council, you know, I think has been falling short. I think there is an area that they don't address. Now they say, oh, these people have mental, mental illness or drugs, and then they stop there. Nobody talks about if you are making $10 an hour, you can't pay $1,800 a month rent. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is the issue. That is the real issue. What happens to these people? Right. Where do they go? Right. When a studio apartment costs twelve hundred dollars a month for rent, you know you have working poor living in their cars, mm -hmm. um, still working, you know, contributing, paying taxes, but just can't afford to live here. Um, you know, I was born and raised here, and I don't remember seeing this problem when I was growing up. I don't know. I don't remember seeing remember the problem. This, no. And years ago, the city and state used to build low-income housing. Right. We don't do that anymore. And I think as a result of that, we're seeing the negative side of that. You know, people got no place to go, right? They're living on the streets. And by the way, the sit and lie bill, while it serves a purpose, right? Especially in Waikiki, we, wanna, we yeah. don't want people on the sidewalks defecating and urinating, right? Can't do that. That's not acceptable. Um, but at the same time, but just moving people from one neighborhood to the other, that's a short-term fix that ultimately it's going to go wrong. Look what happened in Mother, Mother Waldron Park yes. recently with the Japanese tourists. You know, it's bound to happen. You know, and if we don't do something about it real quick, it's going to happen more often. What just, amazes me is, like you said, they're moving the cost of moving these people, they could build housing, yep. I think, because it costs a lot of money all of the maintenance people and the trucks and whatnot, which I'm sure they don't call that a cost, but it is. It is, absolutely. And certainly we could build something. Um, you know, part of the problem too is um, we have private citizens like our churches in the community. I, I met with a gentleman, um, um, again, walking door to door and at a coffee hour where his church wants to build these um, little modular units, right? Kind of like a dome thing. Right. But he can't get the permits to do it. It's, they've been waiting for over a year now to just get the permit to do it. And it's not going to cost the city or the state any money. This is private donations that they're going to do it. They just can't get the funding, or excuse me. The permitting. The permitting. Well, it seems to me several years ago that that was supposed to be that one-stop place for permitting, you know? Mm -hmm supposed to speed it up, but it obviously doesn't. If your friend says it hasn't. No, over a year they've been waiting for a permit. Yeah, and this is private money, you know? It's from a church that cares about our people and wants to help. 
you know. Well, where, where, where is the breakdown? Do you know? Where, what keeps the permits from? No, and if elected, that's one of the things I want to look at. If see that if we could look through the the um, the permitting process and or the entire permitting ordinance and do a complete overhaul. You know, one of the things that people are telling me while I'm walking door to door again, right, if they want to just build an in-law bedroom or uh, they have a new child, they want to build a bedroom, and they got to wait a long time for a permit, right? But then what's amazing to me, which brings me to my next subject, is monster homes. Yes. How are these people getting their permits, right? Look, at there's a terrible. monster home. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's cold. Yes. Oh, but, you know, in um, Coolio O, there are a couple of monster homes. Two They're or three. Everywhere. They're Two everywhere. They're everywhere, yes. And that little street, where do they park all those cars? Exactly. The street is that big. Where do they park? There's no place to park. No. Yeah, you're, you're, yes. And exactly. is it a walk up? It, it's the monster it, houses, it's, it's a walk up. It's as if it's a walk up, yeah, with those 18 bedrooms. You know, it's just ridiculous. Can you imagine 18 new adults there in that community on that street? 18 more cars? You know, it just doesn't work. Right across the street from Coolio O, it's near Summer Street. That is, yeah, back in Summer Street. Yeah. Right. There's three of them there that are built. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're monstrosities. They're three stories high, right? One, two, three. I hear they're the same owner. It looks, they, I would think it is because the they look different except the color of the paint. Right. Oh, you other know exactly that, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, other than that, they look the same. Yeah, yeah, they look identical. That's true. Um, you know, that troubles me. It really does. And, and the neighbors in, the, in that neighborhood, you know, are extremely troubled by it, you know. I would think so because that was such a quiet little neighborhood. And again, back to those streets being so narrow. And so I've canvassed that area years ago. And so many of those people have been there for generations. Mm -hmm. And now what? Yeah. What happens to them? Right, right. I agree. And you know what's interesting, though? This monster home problem seems to have popped up within the last three or four years. Right? Even four years ago, we didn't have this problem. No, I've never you heard know? the word monster home, much right. less. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I think the council has been short to act. They finally put a moratorium on it, right? But to me, I think, and I, that's why I'd like to um, work with DPP, Department of Permanent and Planning, if at all possible, to see what's the problem. Where was the breakdown? Why did these homes get permitted to begin with? Right? Or did they? Or did they? There's this one on Date Street, you're absolutely right, that has no permit whatsoever, you know? Um, Councilman Ikaika Anderson has a bill sitting on his desk, he's trying to get it heard in the zoning committee that would allow the Department of Permitting and Planning to tear it down. And again, walking door to door, talking to people, most people agree, just tear the thing down. There has to be a consequence for breaking our laws, right? And if you let these guys break our laws, the next people are going to go ahead and do it too, you know? Well, we need to take a break. Okay. And we'll be back in a minute. And then let's talk about the other issues in those districts, okay? okay? Be great. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground, uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground, that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters.
Today we are talking to my dear friend, and all of you know I only talk to dear friends, <laughs> my dear friend Tommy Waters, and he is running for Honolulu City Council District 4, which is huge. So, Tommy, speaking of huge, mm -hmm. wh how big is the district? Oh my goodness. Um, I, I don't mean know, in square feet, but the... Well, there's over 100,000 registered voters. A hundred, over 100,000. And get this, only, I think, in the last general election, about 40,000 voted. Or at least, yeah, 40,000 voted. So it's, it's a dismal turnout, you know? I'm trying to think of how we can get more people to come out and vote. Well, okay, so so many people say, well, there's nothing to vote for. So you have to give them something to vote for. Absolutely. You know, and again, I'm walking door to door, knocking on people's doors, trying to just encourage people to, number one, vote. And second, of course, asking people to vote for me. But um, just, just getting people to vote. I'd be really happy to get people out to vote. You know, I've noticed on the voting rolls, it's a lot of people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and I've even met people in their 90s. Young people, you know, it's very, very rare. I come across people in their 20s. Um, that, that are voting, and rarely, if ever, teenagers, you know, 18 and 19 year olds. Mm -hmm. you well, know, that it, troubles me. It, it, it does. And again, maybe because it's not on the tablet. I don't know. I don't know. But th that age group, they've been voting forever, so they keep on voting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I've said this over and over again, it's not enough to vote. If you don't participate, if I vote for you, then I expect when I call your office, you return my call. Absolutely. And when I come to see you, we know who you are. Not just you, but all of the, because people need to be involved. You uh, cannot say, okay, I voted for you, now go do something. We have to be involved. So, speaking of involvement. Yes. You have Waikiki in your district. Yes. Now, you, we remember when Waikiki was magic, and now what have we got? Well, um, before we get to Waikiki, can I just address yes. your, your, your initial comments? Um, to me, it's vitally important that your legislator knows what's going on in the community. And how do you do that? One, you got to be in your community, right? Participating right. in events that are going on, whether it be neighborhood board meetings, um, association meetings, you got to be there. That's number one. And then um, number two, when people call your office, you have to return their calls immediately and promptly. And emails as well. It's vitally important because your elected official is your representative, right? Right. Keep in touch with them. I put my cell phone on all my, my walking pieces, and I hope people use it. They call me because it makes my job easier if you tell me what you need and want, right, and what's important to you. I'm out there fighting for you, fighting for our community, right? So back to Waikiki. Yeah. So, um, no, Waikiki is a, a, a beautiful, wonderful place. I surf there all the time. Um, and I lived there for a, a, a year or two while I was in college. Um, on Tusatala Street years ago. When that was the jungle. Well, <laughs> yeah. You remember the jungle. <laughs> but, but no, it's a beautiful place. But you know, the residents there tell me there's a big noise problem, right? You got those mopeds. Um, oh, yes. Up and down the street, the trucks backing up with their loud beepers, right? Um, you got still homeless people on the streets defecating and urinating with signs, um, you know, saying, money for weed. I saw a gentleman with, with a sign that said that. I mean, it's just not a good idea. Um, there's an overcrowding with these unpermitted businesses on the sidewalks, right? That's not fair to the people who are paying rent to open their business on the sidewalk. Um, that's a problem that people are talking about. You know, it's so sad that those pavilions that they had, they removed the roofs so yes. that they wouldn't have people loitering there. How sad is that? You know, why can't we get the people who are loitering, doing bad things, dealing drugs and everything, get them off, off the sidewalk? You know, this oh, is you where mean people, the tops are gone? The tops are gone. You know, we oh. want people to be able to enjoy that. It's a beautiful spot, you know, to go and have lunch. It, yeah. It's just sad. It's it super, is, super sad. It is sad. And now 
and the crime. I don't remember crime before, but yeah. that's, that'll tell you how old I am. Another thing <laughs> that they tell me, uh, the, the residents there, about the cabaret licenses till 4 a.m., you know? Um, why does it have to be till 4 a.m.? You know, if they're in a hotel or whatnot, it seems to be better contained, you know? Um, and the hotel can have their own security and regulate this. But a 4 a.m. cabaret license seems to be problematic, you know? Where, where are they located, the cabarets? I thought everything was within a building. Is this separate? Yeah, well, there were. Remember there was that shooting yeah. um, recently on Kuhil Avenue? Um, it was just a business, a bar, that was on Kuhil. You and know, they have a 4 a.m. license? Uh, they have a 4 a.m. license. I don't know the name of the establishment, but no, I remember no, I mean, reading but it I in just, the paper. Yeah. I, I'm just surprised, that's all. But did that tell you how long it's been since I've been to Waikiki? Uh, but the local residents are concerned about of that. Of course they are. And it, it appears to me that, you know, sometimes their, excuse me, their opinions are taken for granted. You know, they're telling people, we don't want 4 a.m. cabaret license, but yet they're still issued. Well, you know? is it that people our council people don't appreciate that there are real residents in Waikiki and not just tourists is you know people look at Waikiki and think oh there's nothing but tourists in these hotels and yeah a lot of they, people live in Waikiki are, yeah uh, do they not know that do our city council people not understand I can't speak for them I mean I can speak for myself and I know they're there you know um, I go to the neighborhood board meetings and I see their concerns firsthand and um, they're good people and they, they care about the community just like, the, like every other community. They care about Waikiki. They want to make sure it's a safe place. By the way, Marsha, did you know that HPD is over 200 police officers short island-wide? Over 200 officers. Why? Okay. Well, I think there's a number of reasons, right? They were, for a long time, um, losing officers to other jurisdictions who are paying more. Mm -hmm. But you know we're finding out that while the pay is better um, on the mainland, for example, so is the, risk. the retirement, well, <laughs> yes, true, it's the more risk. dangerous. But the retirement wasn't as good. So we're, we're, that's um, part of the reason why we were able to retain some. But just people are retiring. You know, they're getting older. You know, we have a system of 25 years and out. Um, but to, let's see, over 200 officers short. To me, the best deterrent to crime is a patrolling police officer. Even good people will change their behavior when they see a police officer yeah. driving behind them, right? You could be going to the speed limit. You change your behavior, and criminals will too if they see a police officer. So one of the things I want to do is try to help the new chief, who I love. I think she's wonderful, by the way. Have you met her yet? Yes. Um, chief Ballard? Yeah, she's great. Um, one of the ideas, and I'm sorry I keep talking, but one of the ideas she has is shortening the, the length of time for... Um, the police academy from a year to six months for those who have a college degree, for example. Um, that way we can what get about more police those, officers. Uh, I hadn't thought about this before, but there's so many military people that have all that same training. Can't they? Wouldn't that shorten the time in the academy? I, I don't know. I'm yeah. just, once you mentioned it, I, I yeah. think of looking at other places for people. Even if we do that, apparently, it's still going to take four years to get caught up. But um, we have to start There's somewhere. Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What else? Um, the alawai. Yes. The pollution. Yes. So I'm a canoe paddler. I, yeah, I, I'm I, sure that's, you know that. Yes. I was the president of Hui Lanakila Canoe Club way back in the 90s. And I've paddled Molokai Channel a number of times, but we practice it in the Alawai. And yeah, oh my goodness. Um, it is really dirty. It and is. it's not healthy, right? For our, our young people. We got a lot of kids paddling in the Alawai. Geez, there's gotta be at least one, two, three, four, five, five, at least five clubs that paddle out of the Alawai, you know, practice in the Alawai. And it needs to be dredged, you know, um, on a schedule, you know, rather than once every 10 or 15 years. You know, I think it's a good idea to do it more often. What, now the water comes from where? where what are the headwaters to the Alawai Canal? Where, where does it start? Geez, everything Malka from the Alawai, if you look at it, it feeds down into the Alawai, especially Manoa, though. Manoa yeah. is a big feeder into the Alawai. 
Well, we had a candidate who said the stream up there was polluted, so it's coming all the way down. Yeah. That's un in Hawaii, it's just hard to imagine, as beautiful as it is, that it would be polluted. That's, that's unacceptable. Well, initially, you know that the alawai was supposed to connect back to the ocean over right. by the Kapahula groin, right? And, mm -hmm. and that was just never done. That way the water can better circulate. circulate. So, I mean, that's always going to be a problem, right? Because it's not circulating. So the idea is you have to dredge it and clean it because all that silt coming down from the mountain just fills up. And then the pesticides and everything else that yes. comes off from people's the yards, yards that are mm -hmm. feeding into that. When you wash your car, all the soap going into the drains coming down. So I think something as, as precious as we are an island, mm -hmm. as precious as water, you would think we'd take better care of it. Yeah. So is that the city, that is the city, or is that the state, the Alawai? And the waters, are they the city or the state? I think this, I was at the neighborhood board recently, and they were talking about the state putting money in the budget um, for the Alawai. I, I think it's all of our responsibilities in, in one way or another, but I think the state, through the Department of Health, well, they monitor the water quality, if that's what you're asking about. Okay, they monitor it, but do they do anything? Well, I think, Other like I monitor? said, this, the state is the one who is going to go in there and clean it out. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm quite sure it is. Yeah. So, what I want you to do, I yes. want you to look into the camera. Okay. And I want you to tell us who you are and why we should vote for you. Okay, well, thank you. Um, I'm a former legislator. I did three terms in the Hawaii State Legislature. You know, I used to be the chair of the um, Higher Education Committee and the Judiciary Committee. I know what it takes to do a good job. I'm willing to put the time and effort into it. And I'm a good listener. I think that's the number one thing that, that you can count on. I, although today I seem to be talking a lot. But um, that's my job. I'm a, I'm a better listener. Um, and it's important because your opinion matters. I want, I'm a hard worker. Everybody who knows me knows that uh, you know, I work long hours. And I would just be so honored and privileged to be your legislator and your council person for District 4, from Hawaii Kai to Waikiki. Well, thank you so much. And we look forward to hearing from you after August 11. All right. So keep in touch. Thank you I so will. much. Thank Aloha, you. Aloha, and we'll see you next time. Aloha.